Hi, Mr. Williams. Is there anything that you want to say? Um, yes, ma'am. Um, I take full responsibility for, you know, my crimes or my charges. Uh, I want to say sorry to my family, my mom. My mom got 11 kids. I can't say all their names, you know. My managers, my kids is not here. Uh, really, everybody that got something to do with this situation, I want to say sorry for just like, you know, being having so much time investing into this, you know. And, um, I am a, a, a smart guy. I am a good guy. And I really got a good heart, you know. I, I find myself in a lot of stuff because, because I was just nice or cool, you know, and I understand that you can't be that way when you reach a certain height because it could end bad and it, and it don't really have to have nothing to do with you, but it could end bad and it could, you know, fall on you. And I know <clears throat> the choice is yours is up to you and I hope that you allow me to go home today and, and just trust in me to just do the right thing and never see you again unless it's, unless it's at a, you know, bar in the future or something. Just out of this type of situation, I promise you I won't ever be in this type of situation again. I'm, I'm going away. I've learned from my mistakes. You know, I come from nothing and I've made something and I didn't take full advantage of it. I'm sorry. Uh, through these last two and a half years of my life, you are really, truly, honestly, the best thing that has happened to me because you made made everything fair for me and everybody involved on both sides. You know, um, I'm sorry to the sheriff, you know, everybody for just having to put extra time in. I know y'all got to pay more money, but. I'm sorry for y'all having to put this extra time in to be away from y'all family, you know, and I just hope that you find it in your heart to allow me to go home and be with my family and just do do better as a person. I know what I bring to the table. I know what I am. I know the heights I've reached. I know the impact I got on people, period, in the community, you know, all people, I learned that late, like past, these past two or three years of my life, I kind of learned that late, and maybe it was because I was, you know, probably on drugs or anything, I don't know, but I have came to my senses, and I understand what I mean to this world, but I am a good guy, you know, I, I, I don't mind doing stuff like, you know, like uh, free shows, and I always did that, you know, I, I did free shows and gave them to single parents, millions of dollars. You know, I made $1.8 million on, on a free show and I gave it all to single parent charity. And I did like two or three shows that made like 700,000 a piece. And I gave it to uh, the breast cancer organization. Like, you know, I, I, I do things, but I put millions of dollars back into my community for real. I really did. I did more than anybody ever did from my side, you know, but I understand you know, rap lyrics, I understand how it could be twisted. I understand what it could do to the mind of people. I understand all that, and I'm, I promise you I'm 100% changing that. You know, it's just I'm older, I'm grown now, you know, and it's just like I'm smarter. I, it's more things to rap about. Like, I, I've experienced a lot of good things. I experienced more bad things, but I experienced a lot of good things too. And anyway, I can, I can go forever. Well, I appreciate it. And, um, I appreciate that you do realize how much of an impact you have on people. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's past your neighborhood. It's worldwide, especially young people. And having come up from where you came up from and living in and around that, you know that gangs are damaging to our community and it may be that a whole lot of rap music and the rap industry is I mean honestly it sounds like a modern day version of kind of WWE wrestling that used to be on television where people would just get up and posture and act like they hated each other and it may be that that's a lot of what 
is going on in the music industry with rap. But whether it is fake or not, it has tremendous impact on kids and young people who think this is cool, this is what I want to do, look at him, he's a millionaire, I can do that by being, you know, a, a gangster in the streets. And that's not true. What you're likely to have happen to you if you're a gangster in the streets is you get shot, you get killed, or you get thrown in prison. And those are, you know, by far the most likely outcomes. And, you know, you saw, you've been in here watching the trial, and you've seen the pictures of Mr. Ryan posing with a gun as big as he is at 15 years old and going out and shooting and killing another teenager. And that's what gangs do, and that's unfortunately a lot of what rap music does. And if you are a modern-day John Lennon, you know, I mean, he might, he might have rapped, too, in this day and age. I don't know. But I know you're talented, and even if you choose to continue to rap, you need to try to use your influence to let kids know that that is not the way to go and that there are ways out of poverty besides hooking up with the powerful guy at the end of the street selling drugs. And, you know, I know that happens for protection sometimes, but a much better way would be getting an education and setting, you know, hanging around with people who set a good example. And you be one of those people that sets a good example. Um, I mean, all right, so that's, that's my high horse on that. I could also go on. Um, but I, I want you to try to be more of the solution and less of the problem. All right? All right. So it is not um, lost on the court that the state, had they been able to come to agreement on certain special conditions, was willing to entirely dismiss the RICO count, was willing to entirely dismiss one of the gang counts, and was willing to entirely dismiss this, you know, machine gun count, um, was willing to give a sentence that permitted Mr. Williams to walk out of the door today and therefore does not seem to be particularly worried that Mr. Williams, if on the streets, would be a danger to society. I'm taking that into consideration in crafting my sentence. <clears throat> and in permitting a NOLO plea to the RICO count in one of the two gang counts, I... Um, would not be permitting the NOLO to the one if you were not pleading guilty to at least one of them. Uh, and, but you are, and y'all admit a factual basis for the counts that you are pleading guilty to. I find there to be a factual basis for those counts. And for the remaining counts um, with which you are charged, I am going to impose a sentence, and I... And I I've taken a little bit of the suggested special conditions from the defense and a little bit of the special conditions suggested by the prosecution. Um, on count one, the court sentence is 20 years to serve five years, commuted to time served, the balance of 15 years to be probated, and a $25,000 fine. On count two, the sentence is five years, to serve, commuted to time served. That's the minimum sentence that's permitted um, on that count. Um, it is required to be run consecutively. I'm going to run it consecutive to count one, but I am going to um, backload 
Oh, I'm sorry. That is not commuted. That is five years to serve, and it's going to be run consecutively to count one, backloaded by which I mean after you serve your 15 years of probation, if you have been successful on that probation, and I sincerely hope that you are, then at the end of that 15 years, I will commute the entire rest of any service portion of your sentence to time served. So I'll, I'll get to the end of it and give you the total sentence, but um, I'm also gonna impose a $15,000 fine with regard to that count. Count 57, 20 years to serve five, commuted to time served, the balance of 15 years probated, concurrent with count one. Count 58, 10 years to serve five, commuted to time served, balance probated, concurrent with count one. 59, five years to serve, commuted to time served, concurrent with count one. 60, five years to serve, commuted to time served, concurrent with count one. Count 61, five years to serve, that is required to be also a consecutive sentence, so that's gonna be run consecutively to count 56 and backloaded. Count 62, 10 years to serve, also required to be served consecutively, that's gonna be consecutive to count 61, also backloaded. So essentially, the total sentence is 40 years to serve the first five years in prison, but commuted to the time that you have already served, followed by 15 years on probation, followed then by the backloaded 20 years, which can be served in custody and will be served in custody if you are not successful on your probation. If you are successful, in completing your 15 years probation, that will be commuted to time served. Um, you are to remain on reporting status for the first half of your probation, active reporting for the first seven and a half years of your probation, and that is um, pursuant to OCGA 17-10-1, subsection two, I'm sorry, A2A. Um, and Mr. Steele and Mr. Adams, uh, in order to keep him on reporting status, there needs to be good cause shown. We all concede that good cause is shown here? Stipulate. All right, I appreciate that. Special conditions of your probation. What, what good cause, what do you mean? Can I have a second, Your Honor? Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, you had enough time to talk with your attorneys? Yes. Okay. All right, special conditions of your probation. Um, after 48 hours from your release, you are to stay away from the metro Atlanta area, and that's defined by the U.S. Census Bureau. It may change, um, but you can look that up anytime to figure out what that is. Uh, for the first 10 years of your probation, subject to the following exceptions, you are permitted to be in the metro Atlanta area to attend any wedding, funeral, or graduation from high school, college, or graduate school of any of your immediate family members. Uh, and immediate family members is defined the same way that you all were contemplating it when you were negotiating. Um, you can get here up to 24 hours prior to any such event, and you need to leave within 48 hours after any such event. Uh, in addition, during each year of your probation, I'm going to require that you come to the metro Atlanta area and make a live anti-gang and anti-gun violence presentation four times a year, each year of your probation, at a grade school, a middle school, a boys or girls club, anything like that, that type of group. And if you want to, that presentation can include a benefit concert and these presentations may count towards your required community service hours, which I'm gonna impose, um, that during each year of your probation, you perform 100 hours of community service. You are, uh, and this is required by the fact that there's a gang conviction. Uh, you shall not knowingly have contact of any kind or character with any other member or associate of any criminal street gang. 
um, exception to that if your brother is a um, member of any street gang. I hope you talk him into getting out of it. Um, Quantavius Greer, and then also Sergio Kitchens, as long as you are contractually obligated to him. Um, that is going to include anybody who is named in this indictment, uh, except as absolutely necessary to conduct the lawful business of your musical career, and to any extent that the state is not agreeing to um, the exception for Mr. Kitchens. Um, in the event that that part is not enforceable because it is only a portion of a special condition um, going to provide that um, that be severable from the rest of this, and I'll put some case sites in the Senate sheet for that. You are in no way to promote any criminal street gang or any criminal street gang activity, including on any social media platform. You are not to utilize any hand signs, terminology, or language that promotes any criminal street gang. You are not to participate in any criminal street gang activity. You are not to knowingly engage in any contact with any, any of the victims that are listed in this indictment or with any of their um, family members. And you may not have in your possession or with arm's reach any kind of a firearm because you're going to be a convicted felon. Um, and that is, except I know that you have security and you need security, um, you can be uh, within arm's reach of a firearm that is in the possession of either licensed law enforcement or licensed security personnel that are in your security detail or anybody that you're performing with. Uh, you are to submit to random drug screens and uh, not use any drugs unless they are prescribed for you by a licensed physician. You are to execute a Fourth Amendment waiver that will permit the search of your person, residence, vehicles, and electronics for any firearms, any criminal street gang paraphernalia, or any illicit drugs. And... As I mentioned with regard to one of the first of your co-defendants from this trial, at least since I've been involved to plead guilty, um, our Uniform Superior Court rules instruct and provide that it is absolutely proper for a judge to grant leniency in sentencing when quote, the interests of the public and the effective administration of criminal justice are served, unquote. And I think that this plea is in the interest of the public and in the interest of effective administration of justice. I um, have been trying to ensure that to the extent I can, this trial also abides by that. It's been challenging at certain times. Um, I find your plea to be freely, knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily entered with an understanding of the consequences, and I accept it as such. I also need to inform you that your attorneys were going to represent you through either the last day of this term of court or 30 days from now, whichever is later, and any of the filings that were mentioned um, that need to be filed within that time they would file on your behalf unless they are permitted to withdraw from representing you before that time. Um, I am not going to impose the conditions suggested by your counsel about the benefit concerts and the donations to the sheriff's office, but I certainly strongly encourage you to do those things um, and to do and continue to do things that benefit your community and especially help young people to stay out of criminal trouble. And unless there is anything from counsel other than that. I have one matter, Your Honor. Okay. And does the state as well? Yes. Your Honor, um, with regards to Mr. Williams being permitted to come to the Metro Atlanta area yes. or Cleveland Avenue area for funeral or the other items. Right. Can you also consider, uh, God forbid, there's a serious medical condition of a person? That uh, in is, his um, immediate family, yeah. certainly. We can add that. And I also meant to mention um, 
because I know you do travel all over in order to um, pursue your career, that um, it's permissible for your probation to be transferred to out of state, and that has to be done through probation, but um, that is fine with the court. And um, you may also keep your, or nobody's mentioned it, but keep your passport and travel um, out of state and internationally to the extent that you need to do that for business purposes as well. All right, um, Mr. Body. Thank you, um, and I, I appreciate, well, I cannot even begin to understand what they must, um, anybody must be going through when they lose a family member to violence or criminal violence. Um, Mr. Williams himself has expressed his own sorrow to the family. Uh, I, again, am going to stand by my belief that the appropriate time to hear a victim impact statement from them is at the close of the trial that contains the murder count with regard to their family member. All right. Thank you. Okay. Court is adjourned. Good luck to you.